Hello and um, welcome to this demonstration that I would like to show you. Um, about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I displayed this new engine I've been making, a scripting engine, and now I'd like to take the opportunity to show you a little bit more in depth as to what I've been doing and to show you some more of the capabilities I've been adding to it. Um, but before we start, I would like to address that many of the textures are um, they, they, they're, just, they're just being used as uh, temporary textures just because you know I don't, I'm not a great artist or anything and many of the things are definitely largely incomplete many of which I'll talk about as I progress so let's get started so I'm going to go ahead and run it also it may lag a little because I'm running both Audacity and a recording program so here we are So, as you can see here, this is going to be the splash screen. Um, honestly, I need to add a lot more. Um, there's going to be clouds and things, but whatever. So, let me go into the main menu. And this is what the main menu looks like. Um, like I said, not a great artist. Just kind of a way to show you what it's going to look like. And kind of the theme that the project is going to take on. Um, more like sky themed, whatever. I'll go ahead and show you as we begin. Um, notice you don't have a mouse cursor right now. I have not added that in yet. Alright. So here it is. Like I said, it's lagging pretty badly. Um, so here we are. Just kind of an idea to show you that all of these things have been scripted in. This animation has been scripted in and these things have been scripted in and if you want I can go ahead and show you actually how you can script these things so first off I actually want to turn this event off because it actually started without me wanting to so let me go ahead and re-roll the room so this flag animation is actually going to be in the file mechanic room and then as you can see flag and then these are the different states that the flag have you might be wondering how does it know that this is going to be a flag well actually you specify in the texture the texture location and then the location in the real space and then the width and the height of the sprite and then these are all different um, states that this one sprite can have and it just runs it. Hence you would notice that the movement's a little jerky and that's actually intentional. Again, not a great artist. And then down here we can see that there are dynamic lights. These are supposed to be lamps. Um, don't know what you think of them but they, they, they're supposed to be lamps. <coughs> so let's say that we wanted to change the light of these lamps. Well, that would actually be in this one right here. And then we would go to this light animation or L anim. And then right here is actually where the um, light colors are stored. And if you notice, we have two we have a L, -A L anim down here and L anim down here up here. So if we wanted, we could just make it a blue light. So we mer we put all the red and green values to zero, and then if we were to reload this room and go over there, <coughs> we would see that this light is all blue. Might be a little difficult here. Maybe if we done something like something like that. So then if we reloaded the room. and then here you go you have a blue light and you can see that it's actually moving and it is flickering to show that this is in fact animated so that's cool and all but I would like to show you some other things I've been working on so over here is a door um, it's just based on 
location so far. So I move over here, you notice it closes. But as I get close to it, oh, now I'm in a different room. Um, you see that you have a light back there, and you see it completely casts a light on the character as it gets in it. Like I said, all these textures are very temporary. Um, if you notice though that your character is in fact a robot and that's actually going to probably be the protagonist of the main game um, like I said more like sky themed that's why you can kind of see a clear sky in the back and then it, even if we were to go back into this room it's lagging pretty badly you would notice that there is an edge all the way over here and it's going to stay like that where eventually if you fall off you would die but I have not programmed that in so if you were to fall it will just go on forever I also need to change the spawn so every time you reload a room um, you don't have to go back up there should be an easy fix though so then we go down here and then we notice that this door is opened and then it leads to the final room in this demo just kind of platforming um, you will notice that this door does not open and that is because it is locked notice this is a bit darker than the others and in fact we could even change that if you go to junction which is what this room is and then ambience and then we change this to just completely white and then reload everything is in their bright colors and of course you would know that the backs also dark we could change the sky color like that and then reload it there you are you got an actual cool looking scene um, it is incredibly slow because of recording I need to change some frame rate issues I've been having. Uh, it, it kind of been bugging me down, but I mean that's it. And we could move back. We would notice that the ambience goes back to low, but that's just because that room is lower. But when you go into this room, it's bright, dark, bright. I mean you guys get the idea. Of course, all of these are temporary textures pretty good collision system it's a little inaccurate but that's only because I've actually not fully set the collisions rectangle to be the same as the players so that's why you have a little bit of buffer room you know, I don't hit my head on the thing right there so that's actually pretty much it um, if we wanted to we could set this back all that you guys get the gist. Um, in the earlier on when I was showing the first room you notice that it got a little bit brighter that's because there's also events and then we have this right here I commented it out but the sensor it detects a player's location and then it will con it will repeat so even if you go in it again and if you move out if you move out it will no longer be active if you move in it will be active again you can change that by doing once where you only have to enter it once and then you can leave and it'll still keep going and then this right here says we want to change the ambient light um, we're using sensor zero which is this one and this is the light that we're changing it to and this is the speed that we change the light to so just just things like that um, if you wanted we could even add that in to here just uh, events you could just and by the way the naming is arbitrary that's just you know like just just to make it a little bit easier so if you wanted we could change the emulate to zero so let's go ahead and go into the junction room again and you will notice that as soon as we Maybe if I change that to that. You will notice that it begins to get darker. 
And that's pretty much it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this little demonstration. Leave your comments, thoughts below. Um, other than that, yeah, thanks for watching.